Now, depending on how long you have been using Flutterflow for, you'll probably would have come across the term of a custom widget. Now, one use case for a custom widget, of course, is to extend the capability of your Flutterflow application with perhaps Flutter packages off the web, which you can then use with inside your application to provide functionality that Flutterflow does not provide. So what you typically do is you would go over to something like sort of like pub.dev, you would do the search for the package that you perhaps are you looking for. Here, I'm looking for one called Bottom Picker. I would choose that and then within inside here this particular um, kind of package allows me to provide this kind of customized picker at the bottom of my Flutterflow application so of course I would go here I'd go over to the example I would kind of copy the kind of the code that I would want from here and I would get a reference to the actual package name itself I'd come back over to Flutterflow I'll go to my custom code section and of course I'd create a brand new custom widget I'd paste my code in here and then I would set my dependency up here which is the reference that I had just at the top of the page there and of course I would then be good to go I'd then go over to the actual widget tree I would then create a brand new uh, kind of entry here I'll go to the actual kind of components choose my time picker and then I'll add it within inside the widget tree now when I spin this particular application up if I go over to my test mode here I've got this little button that called select time now this is the custom widget and I would choose that I would then utilize the functionality of the actual package itself and then hit the little tick here and I've got the selected time recorded with inside my application. So of course, that is one use of using a custom widget. Now, one of the pain points here of a custom widget is that pretty well much my customization that I would actually do here would be, would be with inside the actual custom widget itself. Now, that is great. Um, it means you have to get your hands dirty a little bit more with inside the actual code. But of course, in this particular example, that's not the only way that you can do it. You can actually use a custom action. Let's go and have a look and see how you would do the same thing using a custom action. Okay, so basically in the widget tree, the first thing I'm going to do is get rid of this particular custom widget. Let's just hit the delete there. Let's add a brand new Flutterflow button in. Now, the, the great thing about this, of course, is that what we're doing is, is we're obviously using a Flutterflow widget. Now, this Flutterflow widget is going to actually invoke the actual picker to display, allow us to select the time. And of course, that time will then be stored with inside our app state variable. So let's just now customize this button just quickly. There we go, it's got the button. Let's just now put this straight to the top there. That's super, that's all we need to do. So next up, let's now go and create the actual custom action itself. Okay, so now we need to create some custom code. Let's move over and select custom code on the left-hand side. Let's create a brand new one. So I'm just gonna say add an action here. I'm gonna give this one a name. I'm gonna say time picker action just like that let's now move over to the right hand side so we need to set some settings here so the first thing that we're going to select is this include a build context this is really really important because we need to pass in a reference back to the parent widget that is actually invoking this particular action so make sure you choose include build context and we also need to create an actual argument itself so just choose add arguments here now I'm going to call this one uh, submit callback now this is going to be really important to to our actual application. Let's just make sure we just choose action down here as the type. Let's take off the nullable. Now the whole idea of this submit callback is that what we're gonna do with inside this particular action, when the user has actually selected the time, we're gonna then wanna make, we wanna invoke this callback method that's gonna basically just refresh the app state. Okay, that's something that's gonna be really important. That way then, with inside the calling page, we'll be able to see the app state would have been refreshed we would have also then seen that then reflected on the UI because it'll actually show you the time that has actually been selected so I'll show you how that works in just a moment but that's really important we must include that particular argument now what we also need to do is we need to add this actual dependency now this is actually going to be the bottom picker dependency so just choose add dependency move back over to pub dev and here I'm just going to make a copy of this one here so just choose copy move back over to Flutterflow. let's just paste that one in here and of course hit the little refresh option let it do its thing so what we now need to do is we now need to hit the little option up here which is going to view the boilerplate code just choose that and you can see here, this is pretty well much got what we need here, some, some parameters set up here, some arguments set up here, which is what we need. Let's just now copy to editor, and that will give us the pretty well much the basic information that we actually need. Now, if you go back over to the sample, of course, within here, okay, so let's choose the, the import here. Let's just grab that. Let's just do 
a copy let's move back over here and just above the actual future statement just pop that in here we've now got a reference we've now got a reference to the package that we're going to use and of course we're now going to now put our code actually in this particular section here so you can see we've got everything set up let's now go and put our code in that we're going to need Okay, so I'll pop some code in here. Let me walk you through it. So basically what we're doing here is we're setting pretty well much up the parameters of this particular bottom picker. So of course you go to sort of uh, sort of uh, the bottom picker here. You'd go down to probably actually on the on the home page here. There's some examples. So of course you can just move down here and you can see here that there's various various examples to choose from. So there's one on here. Uh, where is it? The one that we need is probably the time. If I just scroll up here. There it is. There's the one we're looking for. So pretty well much what you can do is you can literally just copy this particular code here. And what I've done is just pasted that and I've made some additional changes to it. OK, with inside Flutter Flow itself. So you can see here that I've set up some theme details here for our style. So just to make it a little bit more in keeping with our actual application, of course, it means that this particular uh, kind of bottom picker can inherit some of the look and feel from our application. I gave it some text, uh, a name of just select here for the actual button text itself and some other little parameters here that I set up but the key one here is this one here this is the on submit this is when our user actually chooses to select a time so they set the time they hit the little select option and of course this is the submit method that is then called you can see I'll put some some text here some some comments here to kind of indicate what's kind of happening but this is kind of the key statement here and if you've been using Flutterflow for a while you'll know that here we do need to set the actual app state variable of the value that gets selected so that so this is the value which will be selected it becomes um, then the app state is then updated with the actual value itself so if I look into my app state here you'll know I've got one here called a selected time which is really just a date time app state variable this is where it sets it and then of course this is really really important the submit callback this is the bit which we've defined here on the right hand side which will then be executed which will show you how to set up in just a moment and then the rest of it is if we we're not really worried about the actual on close so if the user doesn't actually select anything they just hit the little x that the time picker will, will uh, be dis be removed from display and then of course we're not really worried about executing any particular functionality here and of course the show.context is really just this is kind of like the call out to the actual the actual picker to actually show with inside the page itself so hopefully that's really really straightforward in explanation that's all looking good let's now just make sure that we save it and of course we just need to compile it as well so hit the little compilation option up here let it do its thing we should get a tick box and then we can then move on to the next step OK, so got the little tick box. That's all looking good. So how do we now actually invoke this custom action? Well, really, really simple. Let's move over to the widget tree here. You can see this is the button that we created earlier. Just select that. Of course, open up the action flow editor. If I now choose add action, I'm just going to type in the word custom here and you'll see here I've got this option now called time picker action. Just select that. Now, this is the callback that we actually created with inside the action itself, which, of course, now opens up this action flow editor for me so just choose open and what we need to do in here is we need to do one really really simple thing hit the add action and we're going to type in the word state here choose update app state that's it this just forces a rebuild of the current page because we're going to set that app state variable with inside the action itself this is just going to do the rebuild of the current page and that's all that is actually needed if i just hit close now if you i just recall before i mentioned to you about the actual the, the actual app state variable that i've got created here you can see it's called selected time it's just got a default date and time in there for now that's all that's needed and then with inside the actual top of the application here on the home page i'm just setting that value to be null in this particular instance just so it doesn't display here now if we now fire this actually up with inside test mode let's see hopefully it work perfectly first uh, first time okay so here we are on instant reload let's now see if this works okay for us hit this select time option let's choose a timer say two o'clock in the morning hit select and there we go bingo our selected time is now there so excellent that's working exactly how we want it to 
Okay, so here's one more very, very simple example. I've gone over to pub.dev. I found this one called pop-up banner. This is a great candidate to use for a custom action, very similar to the kind of the bottom sort of time picker that we just used just a moment ago. But this one just simply displays some kind of images in like a, almost like a carousel that kind of just sort of moves from left to right. And you can see here, really, really simple code here. Um, of course, you can extend it a little bit more, but um, what I've done is I've, take this, I've taken this particular code here. I've gone over over to Flutterflow. I've gone over to the custom code option. I've created a brand new custom action called pop-up banner action. As you can see here, I set it up in a very, very similar to way as we did the time picker. I set everything up here on my dependencies. Obviously brought this one in here, set my argument up, although I'm not actually using the callback in this particular example, but I've put it here anyway, and I've just put the code in here. This does, this is about as simple as, as, as it comes. And of course, back on side, my UI here, I've got the pop-up images. I've just gone to the actions and I've just literally calling this instead of the previous one. And of course, in the sample, go over to test mode, hit the pop-up images, and bang, there is the carousel that was displayed up inside the UI. So have a good look around pub.dev, see if you can find other types of uh, sort of packages like this that you can use uh, to enhance your own application as well. So finally then, a big thank you to my Patreon community. They wanted me to put a video together uh, that kind of demonstrate this particular technique and the problems that they are solving inside the community. It's good to get it out to the outside world because I'm sure others are also experiencing these challenges as well. So hopefully you found this video particularly useful. Of course, please do like the video. Really, really useful. Gets the kind of the YouTube algorithm sort of working over time, of course, and gets Flutterflow out to the masses. And of course, if you love this type of walkthrough content, please do subscribe to my channel as well. It's great to have you part of the community. And of course, if you're looking for a, a little bit more extended information, a little bit more sort of kind of uh, behind the scenes kind of stuff in more sort of work in progress sample applications, then please do head over to my Patreon community and become a member there as well. So uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.